This animated sign is a shelf edge display uh, for cigarette displays and it dates back a long way. The chips on this uh, board are dated 1981 and back then microcontrollers didn't exist as such. Microprocessors did exist but not microcontrollers and that meant that to do this with a microprocessor would have required the microprocessor, the ROM, the RAM, the I.O. and it would have been very messy. So it was just cheaper and simpler to do it with logic. I mean, these days we'd just have the driver chip and a PIC, PIC 16F627 would have done this nicely. However, back then they had logic and that's, you know, they just had to work with the logic. And as such, everything is designed around that. So if I, I turn this off now, this light, should I say, and we'll take a look at the sign that's operation. So it's got these little special offer bits at the side here that uh, flash on and off and they, you can enable or disable them with a switch depending on whether there's a special offer or not. The letters light up, now the AND and the H are hooked together and the B and the AND and H and then they're all uh, paired across to uh, minimise the number of channels so you know it's effectively only six channels for that section. The king size is in its own channel and of course the special offer, the two uh, special offer panels are on their own circuit. And if you look at it, uh, you'll see that, that the way it builds up, it's probably a shift register with data being shifted along it. And if you uh, count the sequence, then you'll see it does four with, of the slow build-ups and then four of the fast build-ups, and that that's a bin nice round binary number. And if you do the count, count that, or when it is building up, if you count uh, the speed it does so, then it looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh God, no, I can't do it with that one. It's uh, gone fast, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. One, two, three, four. So it's working on a 16 step sequence, which is binary again. And the special offer bits look like they're just a tapping off the binary sequence. And the king size bit is looks like it's a gated binary. It's like a couple of uh, bits that a high order bit and a low order bit paired off. So let's uh, take a look at this uh, sign in the flesh and see how it's actually done. So I'll unplug this now. Mainly because uh, this is not in its case. It did come originally in a case that was uh, vacuum formed to, sh to fit uh, so that the button was uh, visible and it had a wee port for this ribbon cable to come out of. And underneath this, uh, this is all built into the thing, uh, underneath it is the LED PCB, which looks like this. And it's basically uh, LEDs that, that are just mounted, just firing sideways into a vacuum formed light box. And there's a strip in here that is um, vacuum formed plastic. If I just peel this back, you can, whoop, hold on, I'll just uh, tame this down a little bit so you can actually see it. There's vacuum formed plastic here that is uh, shaped to um, in sections with ribs between them to actually block the light. Uh, and then, actually, I'm trying to remember what how it's done in here. Let's peel this back and see if I can just... Yeah, it's actually, it is, it's um, shaped uh, in sort of square panels around the letters and then with this black overlay in the front uh, to actually um, diffuse, to provide the outline of the letter. And if we take a look at the circuitry, I'll just put this one out of the way at the moment. I've noted down what the chips are in this. So I'm just going to uh, bring the paper on now and adjust the light intensity to match. Oh, that's not bad, actually. I'll just tweak the intensity up a little bit. So what we've got here, we've got the transformer uh, goes to a bridge rectifier via the fuse, and then it goes to a smoothing capacitor. Then there's a 220 ohm. I'll move this up closer, in fact. There's a 220 ohm resistor, limits the current, and there's a Zener diode, drops it down to 5 volts for the logic, and then there's a couple of uh, there's a coupling, decoupling capacitor and a smoothing capacitor for the 5 volts, and then that's fed to all the chips. The unregulated supply, the, the 5 volts is just the chips, the unregulated supply, not sure what voltage it is, I guess probably just a little bit higher than that, uh, just to minimise the losses in this resistor. Um, let's see, how many, how many LEDs are in? 
it's pairs of LEDs, so technically speaking, uh, that's only going to be about 4 volts, so it's not really that much. There's not really going to be much to difference between the... Um, I'm not 100% sure about that, uh, how many... It, how, what size of multiples are wired in. But anyway, uh, oh, I wonder if they're actually... They might actually have... They do have one resistor, so it's probably looped along. So they're probably allowing for up to about 5 LEDs. Um, oh, and they, except in the case of this 5, it would be 5 plus... Oh, more over there. Uh, I'm quite tempted to actually peel this off now. Ugh. No, that's gonna. This is the gooey foam, and it's really sticky, so it's not going to come off easily. But anyway, uh, I could have measured the voltage across that. I could measure the voltage across that. Uh, I'll, I'll do that later, and I'll wee, leave a wee note below in the description. But um, it's uh, that supply then feeds the LEDs. The positive feeds the LEDs, and the negative goes around to the a uh, ULN two double O four which is a driver, and that's got seven outputs to drive the seven channels, plus another channel to make up eight is driven by this transistor, which is driven from a buffer, buffer here, um, through this resistor here. So the chips are as follows. There's a 4047, which is obviously the counter, because it's got the uh, capacitor on it for timing. Uh, and it's a monostable, astable, multivibrator. And... It's uh, got two resistors, and the two resistors are in series, and they're the timing resistors, except to change the speed, and I was quite surprised at this, there's a quad bilateral switch, which is like an analogue switch, uh, and it is actually shunting one of those resistors out, and the other resistor there is just a pull-up, uh, pull-down, should I say, for uh, for that, that uh, the input to that switch, which is fed from gated logic. This chip here is a dual binary counter, and I'm guessing they're cascaded because they're two 4-bit counters, and convenient enough, the 4-bit would be the uh, 16 steps, um, and then, of course, by continuing on, they, they can then gate it down to provide other features like the king-size bit flash on and off. I'm actually looking, I'm seeing that divide into two sections of six. I wonder if they've got two uh, in parallel. Hmm. The... Uh, next chip down here, the only one that's real left, uh, uh, other than the ULN2004, which is just a Darlington driver, is a, is a TTL chip. Uh, oh, there's actually two, two TTL chips. Uh, but this one is quite important. It's a SIM4C164, and it's a shift register, and that must be... It's an 8-bit shift register, and that's what's used being used to build up the actual effect, to create this sort of filling effect. All they're doing is they're shifting it along with a tap off the binary counter. And then another tap off the boundary counter is feeding the input, so it actually fills it up, and then perhaps another gated tap is, is resetting that. And finally, there's the, the hex inverting buffer, a 7404, which is be, being used just for general tasks, just to maybe invert some binary outputs, and then they're using the spare gates and the quad bilateral switch just as general logic. So it's quite neat, it's quite interesting, it's certainly... At the time, it was quite radical, because, you know... Animated LED displays. I, I I always wondered what was in these, and I only ended up getting one because latterly, when I was working in the shop fitting industry, um, some of these displays were being trashed and thrown out, and I grabbed a couple of the panels and the modules just to see what was in them to take them to bits. And if you consider back then that these LEDs here, the, the red was very common. Uh, red was the main high intensity color. And it wasn't even that high intensity. Um, they used to cheat it. They used to say super high intensity, but it was the 660 nanometer, which actually it was a deeper red. So although they could quote higher intensity figures, it wasn't actually as bright as, say, the harder to produce 635 nanometer, the sort of warmer, orangier red. But these ones, they look like a kind of greeny yellow. And um, I'm not 100% sure. It's, it's quite an odd color. But that would have been... You know, it would have been hard sourcing these LEDs in that sort of intensity. Uh, and they're not mega intensity, but, you know, they're still quite high output, especially when you consider each letter is just lit by two LEDs. And you think nowadays that's no great deal because, you know, if one LED would light one of those letters really brightly. But back then, to get that sort of level intensity off just two LEDs when it was kind of like LEDs were mainly used for indicators was something kind of special. So um, it's quite interesting. Other things worthy of note, uh, they've used a single-sided circuit board. They've used single-sided circuit boards throughout. The ribbon cable attaches onto this, but to keep the profile low and to stop it sticking out the front, they've made a small section of the single-sided board double-sided by putting a thin circuit board, uh, a second circuit board, 
back to back with that, with pins linking through, so that they could actually put the uh, socket for the ribbon cable on this side and make the connections then bring them back through onto the other side. And likewise this is uh, single sided as well. Um, just typical traditional chunky logic design, just uh, quite effective really. Uh, it's notable that the mains come in just goes straight onto uh, a, a long uh, pad with the uh, transformers pins on the same, effectively the same pad with two holes, so the wires are actually soldered right across. Um, yep, yeah, it's quite a neat display. It's, it certainly looked, you know, it was really attention catching at the time because it really was really special at that time.